It's 2020, so out with the old and in with the new. It's the beginning of a brand new decade, and we're going to start as we mean to go on in one of the most beautiful places we have ever, ever sailed. Roti Chennai last night and a good night's sleep. It's time to leave Tarempa and go on to one of the smaller islands. I just thought I'd show you this. This is a mooring buoy. I think in the last however many years of sailing, I can count on one hand the amount of times I've taken a mooring line. And we did it wrong. We made a schoolboy error to start with. I thought I'd explain it just quickly. One of the mistakes that uh, people make on a monohull is to run the line down one side off the cleat through the mooring line and back onto the other cleat on the other side. Uh, this actually can present quite a few problems for starters. It will uh, increase the yawing of the boat. Um, it also increases the uh, wear and tear on the boat. So funny enough, uh, Viv Cox wrote an article on Yachting Monthly about how to tie up to a mooring buoy properly. He actually recommends, if you have it, uh, eight mil chain with two lines spliced either side to run the chain through the shackle on the mooring buoy. Now, we were quite fortunate because this mooring buoy already had a line attached to it, but he also recommends running a second line just as backup, and that's exactly what we've done. So uh, that's uh, pretty much how to take a mooring buoy, is just tie up on one side, and on the other side, have a spare line. Anyway, time to go, time to say goodbye, until, uh, I don't know, a week or two's time when we come back to Tarempa, and we're out of here. We managed to get a couple of sails out as we came over the top of Tarempa, but uh, our track at the moment has taken us straight down Siantan, down the east coast, which means we're heading due south, which means we're heading straight into the wind, so we've actually had to put the sails away. Never mind, uh, when we get a bit further down the channel, we'll be turning east and heading to this island, which we've not been to before, which is very exciting. We might even get a little bit of sailing. In the meantime, Liz has cut up our fresh watermelon which we've just been munching on which is why I'm all dribbly around my mouth. That's what's left of half a watermelon and it's bloody good. Got it in the market yesterday from Tarempa. I should add by the way just in case some of you were thinking why don't you tack your way down. Uh, this when you look at it is one of the most reefed areas. I don't know how much you can see there. It's a bit of a mess isn't it? But you can see it's just surrounded by a reef as we said before, the charts are a little bit out around the Anambas, although actually in this channel it seems to be fairly spot on. Um, but uh, you can see it gets a bit tight around here and there's a little bit of current down here as well. So just need to be careful of that.
So this is the Anambas, I remember lots of lush green, lots of reefs, fluffy clouds and the big bay. And over in the distance there, the other side of the, uh, the islands. We're just tying up a little spot just here actually, this looks quite nice. Lots of, again, lots of reef here, but um, next week we've got some strong westerlies coming through. They're going to batter the hell out of Phuket. Um, but uh, it means that somewhere like this, which is on the east side, looking north, could be quite a good spot. We don't see any anchor marks, there's no annotations or anything, but uh, it looks sort of navigable. Look at that water, look how blue that water is. So here we are, first proper anchorage in the Anambas. Wasn't expecting Keith or Eric to be here actually, but it wasn't until we were halfway down our journey this morning that they got in touch to say, hey, we're still here. They're leaving for Borneo and Keith's off to the Philippines shortly. So they're just getting things ready. And by getting things ready, they were diving for fish and we've been invited over for a barbecue this evening, which is very nice. Natalie and Eric said that this reef just behind us is very good. So we're going to have to go down there and explore that tomorrow, I think. Beautiful spot this, Lu Yong it's called. It's been nice just hanging out here. First sort of proper Anambas experience with the coral and the uh, palm fringe beaches and no one on the island which has been great. But it was good to catch up with Keith and Tylee and Eric as well who've all now left and it's our turn to leave. We're heading due south. Not sure about the sailing. Uh, where we're aiming for is only 10 miles away and we'll be going straight into wind. So yeah, let's uh, let's go. So 
Look, this is Pulau Akar. And it's a pretty tight entrance. I don't know if you can see the colour of that uh, turquoise water there. And it's a tight reef entrance in. So, uh, all eyes on the water. <laughs> Landed on probably the smallest beach in Yunnan, but it's the only beach in this whole bay. And we're going to go for a scramble over these rocks and just see what's on the other side. Off you go then. And take a photo first. Well, as you can see, it's pretty rugged here. There's a lot of granite boulder and uh, quite a few sort of mineral deposits. Kind of, I don't know, it looks like sulphur. Uh, but more importantly, we've got the nesting terns and you can hear them behind me. And we're approaching their nesting site. I mean, we're not too close. It's actually, it's all the way down there, but uh, they're obviously a little bit concerned and we appear to be upsetting them. So don't like to do that. Don't like to upset nature where possible. So. I'm turning around and going back. I think perhaps we might take the dinghy out. There's another little bay just there and uh, maybe stick the drone up just for old time's sake. descend down these big granite boulders. Uh, one thing that we've been hearing all morning is the sound of uh, chainsaws. In fact, I saw a couple of trees fall over just over on the other side of the bay. If you remember a couple of years ago, we saw the same thing in another bay. And we think it's the, um, the squid fishermen uh, building their, what we call FADs, but actually the big um, frames that they tow out to sea to catch squid of, of a night time. And uh, we think that they're cutting down timber to, to build new frames and uh, we've seen a couple of little fishing boats here but other than that there's been absolutely nothing at all. The bay sort of reminds us of uh, Sagu Dampar which uh, one yachty called Moon Rock Bay. I think we've decided to call this one Half Moon Rock Bay because there is a baby rock right up on the top of the, uh, the hill there, the little mountain, which has been split in half. So this bay will be known from here on in as Half Moon Rock Bay, but no one around. And that's the difference. Sagu Dampa has now become a bit of a tourist attraction. Um, there's even uh, people ashore now. They're setting up a camp there. I think we'll talk a bit more about this to camera because it's, um, on the one hand, it's quite good for the local people that uh, the Anambas is being earmarked as a place to develop for tourism. But on the other hand, it's obviously having an impact on some of these secluded bays that we're visiting. And that's why it's quite nice to come here 
where there is no one. It's quite far south in the Anambas. Not so many people uh, on boats visit this area. That's the, uh, that's the uh, chainsaw in the background there. The sun is almost at its apex. It's getting quite hot now and of course this granite a little bit warm to walk on but it's offering some beautiful views of Esper in those waters. Just beautiful. over there and you actually saw one of the trees go down didn't you anyway we've just been out in the dinghy and they came alongside they've got a whole load of a stack of timber at the back so obviously those guys have come around to see if they can get anything from us um, we've given them some cigarettes which has made them very happy not the alcohol that they were asking no, for no. <laughs> 